The Clever Elf From the Tales of the Brothers Grimm There were once a man and a woman who had an only daughter, and they thought her so wonderfully clever that they gave her the name of the Clever Elf. One day her father said to his wife, Our daughter is now grown up, and we must get her married soon. Yes, replied the mother, if we find anyone who will have her. Not long after this, a young man named Hans came to ask these good people for their daughter. Yet he made one decided condition, that if he did not find her as clever as they said, he could not marry her. Oh, exclaimed the father, she has a good headpiece, you may be sure of that. Yes, said the mother, and she can even see the wind running through the streets and hear the footsteps of the flies in the ceiling. But they did not tell him how much she disliked trouble or work, and how often she was idle. However, they sat down to supper together and seemed very happy. Presently her mother said, Elf, go into the cellar and draw some beer. The clever elf took the jug from the nail and went into the cellar, taking off the lid as she walked to save time. When she reached the cellar, she fetched a chair and placed it in front of the cask, that she might not have to stoop and hurt her back. Then she stood the jug upon it under the tap, from which the beer ran slowly, and waited impatiently for it to fill. But her eyes were not idle, and while looking round the cellar, she observed upon the wall above her a crossbar, which the mason had by an oversight forgotten to remove. Then the clever elf begun to weep, and to say that she was quite sure she married Hans, that one of them would be killed by a crossbar. And there she sat weeping and wailing over this superstitious fear, till her strength was almost gone. Those above at supper waited for the beer, but none came, and at last they sent for the maiden and said to her, Go and see why the elf is staying so long. Then went the maiden, and found her sitting before the cask, weeping bitterly. Elf, why do you weep? Ah, she replied, shall I not weep when I can foresee that a crossbar will cause my death if I marry Hans? And she pointed to the wall as she spoke. What a clever elf you must be to find this out, said the maiden servant, beginning to weep and mourn over this misfortune. The maiden remained so long in the cellar that her master sent the boy after her. He also began to cry and mourn when he heard what the clever elf had found out. At last the father and mother came themselves, and on hearing the clever elf's story, they both joined in the crying and howling, and the noise became so loud that Hans went himself to discover what was the matter. When he reached the cellar and heard them all screaming and crying one louder than the other, as if they were trying who could weep the loudest, he exclaimed, What dreadful misfortune has happened? Oh, dear Hans, said the elf, look at that crossbar. I have a presentiment that if we are married you will be killed by it, for if it remains here it may fall on your head when you come to draw the beer. No wonder we all weep. Now, said Hans, whose self-love was gratified, I believe that you are a clever elf to weep and make everybody else weep on my account, and I want nothing else to make my household complete but a clever wife. So he took her by the hand and led her away from the cellar to the supper table. The evening passed pleasantly, and very soon after, the marriage took place. But the clever elf did not like work. After they had spent a few weeks in idleness, Son said one day, Dear wife, I must go to work and earn money for a living. Don't you think you could go into our little cornfield and cut down the corn, that we may have some flour to make bread? Yes, my dear Hans, she replied. I will if you wish it. So the next morning Hans went off to his daily work. As soon as he was gone, his wife made some nice broth for herself and took it with her into the field. 
But when she arrived there, she sat down until she said to herself, What shall I do? Shall I nap first, or eat first? Ah, I will eat first. So she ate up the whole pot full of broth, and then, feeling heavy and stuffed with what she had eaten, she asked herself, Now shall I cut the corn, or sleep first? Ah, I know. I will have a nap before I begin my work. Then she laid herself down in the corn and was soon fast asleep. Hans returned home, expecting his dinner, but no one was there, nor anything ready. He waited a long time, but the elf did not come. What a clever elf she is, to be sure, he said, so industrious that she could not even come home to her dinner. But as the evening came on and she still remained away, Hans went out to look for her and to see how much corn she had cut. On reaching the field, he found that none had been touched, and after searching some time for his clever elf, he found her fast asleep amongst the corn. Hans went away in great haste and fetched a fowler's net, covered with little bells which he spread over her, but she continued to sleep as soundly as before. Then he returned home, locked the cottage door, and seated himself to work at a chair as coolly as if no clever elf had ever been his wife. At last, when the clever elf awoke out of her long sleep and found it quite dark, she recollected where she was and rose to go home, while the bells which hung round her tinkled at every step she took. This alarmed her so much that she began to feel puzzled and could scarcely tell whether she really was the clever elf or not. Oh, dear, she said, am I myself? Am I someone else? She was scarcely able to answer this question, and stood a long time as if in doubt. At last a thought struck her. I will go home and ask Hans whether I am really myself or someone else. He is sure to know. She found her way home, although it was dark, very quickly, the bells tinkling as she ran, but when she reached the front door of the house it was locked. She knocked at the window and cried, Hans! Is the elf at home? Yes, he, she is at home. Oh, how frightened she felt as she heard this. Oh, dear, she exclaimed, that I am not the clever elf after all. Then she went from door to door of the neighbors' houses, but when they heard the bells jingling, no one would admit her, and even the neighbors did not recognize her. At last she ran away from the village, and has not been heard of since. So, after all, it is better to be industrious than clever. The End